I feel like over the course of the past six months or so, there has been a ton of new NAS device hype. The biggest was probably Ugreen and their crazy marketing push, but there are rumors that Unify is releasing a new NAS, and at the same time, all eyes right now are on Synology. Home users are frustrated with the lack of hardware updates, enterprise users are frustrated with some of the hard drive requirements, and the common theme here seems to be frustration with Synology. Now, let me be completely clear about something. I am not a Synology enterprise guy. I've used them, but I focus on creating easy to understand beginner content for home users, and sometimes I succeed, and most of the times I don't. So this is the thing. For home users right now, it's probably the absolute worst time to buy a new Synology NAS device, and here's why. Most Synology models are actually extremely similar with a few minor key differences here and there. So we're gonna completely throw out model year devices and break this down by processor. I understand that probably doesn't seem like it'll make much sense, but it will. Synology switched from Intel-based processors to AMD-based processors, starting with the DS1621 Plus that was released in late 2020. The reason is because these processors support ECC memory and the Intel ones didn't. This is a good thing and increases the data integrity of the device because errors are corrected at the memory level as opposed to being written to disk. The downside is that these devices don't support hardware transcoding, which not everyone but some people dislike. So if you actually want hardware transcoding, your best options right now are the DS224 Plus and the DS423 Plus. They come with an Intel J4125 processor that supports hardware transcoding, but it's a processor from 2019 that was actually in the DS920 Plus. So if hearing 920 Plus makes you feel like the device is old, then you can rest assured that the DS224 Plus and the DS423 Plus are old as well. Those last two digits are just more recent, which makes you feel like they're newer, but they're not. Moving on, the AMD Ryzen R1600. It comes in the DS723 Plus, DS923 Plus, and DS1522 Plus. The processor was released in late 2019, early 2020, and was first put in a Synology device with the DS1522 Plus in mid-2022. So if you buy the DS723 Plus or DS923 Plus or DS1522 Plus, you're buying a four plus year old processor that was first put in a Synology device in mid-2022. We will get back to this. The AMD Ryzen V1500B comes in the DS1621 Plus, DS1821 Plus, and the DS2422 Plus. First announced in late 2018 and came in the first Synology device in mid-2020. Quite honestly, a pretty decent processor at the time, but again, no hardware transcoding support. Now there are some major differences when comparing all these devices in terms of their total memory, 10 gig support, NVMe support, etc. But we're not talking about any of that because the DS1618 Plus still has pretty great networking support, but the processor is shot at this point. So the first thing that's gonna make you upgrade or want to upgrade is the CPU, and that's why we're focusing on it. So your options today are to pick a device that has a processor from 2018, 2019, or 2020 if you're a home user and want one of the best devices that Synology offers. Now I have a DS923 Plus and the performance is actually pretty good. And that's to say that I really haven't had that many problems with it and haven't necessarily noticed performance issues, but I've had it. I'm not buying it, expecting it to last another five years. That's a very big difference and is the way that you need to look at these devices. So now for fun, let's guess what some of the new Synology devices could look like based on the information we have from the past five to 10 years of Synology releases, and we can look back and either laugh at me or call me a visionary. I suspect we'll be laughing, but we'll see. Now I wanna be clear, this isn't gonna be what I personally want. It's gonna be what I think they'll release based on the information we have from the past decade of Synology releases. For the next generation of the DS7, DS9, and DS15 line, so the two, four, and five bay plus units, I think they're gonna use something like an AMD Ryzen 2312. 
It's the newer version of the R1600 series that's in the devices currently, uses the same motherboard socket from what I can tell, and it seems like a natural progression for these devices. One other angle they can go is by using the V1500B, which is currently in the DS1621+, 1821+, and 2422+, because it's a worthy upgrade to the R1600 right now, but I don't think they'll do that, and I'll explain why in a little bit. From benchmarks that I haven't performed but found online, it seems to be about a 15% performance boost compared to the R1600, and that's roughly the performance increase we saw between the DS920 Plus and the DS923 Plus. So I think it makes sense. So sticking with the R2312, this means that we'll be stuck with DDR4 memory, but it'll have ECC support still, and I think we'll have the same types of upgrades, meaning the DS7, DS9, and DS15 will have support for 10 gig if you purchase the upgrade module and the same NVMe support. Now listen, I hate to tell you this, but I feel like we're gonna still have one gigabit NICs. The E10 mini networking device that Synology offers is two and a half, five, and 10 gigabit. So if you want a two and a half gigabit NIC, you can have one, you just have to pay for it. Should it have two and a half gigabit NICs standard in 2024? Yes, but this is probably the last time they'll be able to get away with having one gigabit NICs, and I think they're gonna keep them. While there are a ton of two and a half gigabit switches out there, there are still companies like Unify who are charging insane amounts of money for two and a half gigabit support. So I don't think it's crazy to think that we'll be stuck with one gigabit NICs. I hope not, but be prepared. Now, this is why I think they'll pick the R2312 processor as opposed to going with the V1500B, which from benchmarks actually has better performance. The R2312 has integrated graphics, which means that you'll most likely be able to get some sort of hardware transcoding working. But don't be mistaken, Intel is still king in this area. And from everything I've read and researched, it's not even remotely close to as good as Intel's QuickSync because the support just isn't there. But hey, it's an easy marketing angle and it'll be easy to blame the software companies for not supporting it, as opposed to saying that the hardware doesn't support it. Big win for the hardware possibilities, but you're probably not gonna have the support that you're thinking, but maybe I'm wrong. Now on to the DS16, DS18, and DS24 line. I think that it's gonna get bumped up to the Ryzen R2314. This would actually be a pretty big jump in terms of performance because from the benchmarks I can find online, it would be about a 30% CPU performance increase from the V1500B. Again, same idea, same upgrades, DDR4 memory, and I think they'll still have four total one gigabit NICs. Now this will probably be my wildest prediction, but I feel like they're gonna change the design of them. It's an easy way to make the devices look newer while overall incremental upgrades across the board actually occurred. The Synology design is extremely similar to the devices that came out 10 years ago, and I think they'll just make it look fresh, even though it might not be on the inside. At the same time, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if they look exactly as they do today, just like the DS923 Plus looks for the most part exactly like the DS920 Plus did. The truth is, the design of the device doesn't really matter, but it looks dated at this point and I suspect they might change it. Now listen, again, I'm not saying that I want any of this to be true. And maybe we'll be able to point and laugh at me in a few months for making such terrible predictions, but this might be the last time that Synology will be able to get away with incremental hardware updates with all these new NAS manufacturers coming and the hardware in competitor devices being objectively better. We live in a society that's powered by the dollar and making incremental updates to the NAS line and selling them for high prices with high price networking and SSD upgrades is the best way to keep profits high. We can get mad at Synology, but the truth is we should probably be mad at everyone else. If any of them had an operating system that was even remotely close to as good as DSM, from a pre-built NAS manufacturer perspective, we wouldn't have to worry about any of this. You would be able to buy one of those devices and it wouldn't matter that the hardware Synology is releasing is worse in comparison. Our hope should be that those NAS manufacturers succeed and as consumers, we have a more competitive market which will force big changes from all of them on the hardware and software side. Again, Hopefully I am wrong about all of this, but I guess we'll see if this video ages like wine or milk. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.